Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. My name is David Baer, and today I am thrilled to have Dustin Reekman join me. We are going to be talking about partnerships, partnership that we may establish after meeting for the first time today, and a little bit more insight into that in just a couple of minutes. But before we dive into the discussion, Dustin, welcome. Thanks, David. I'm really excited. Our little pre-conversation here was yeah, definitely got me excited about potential partnerships and all the ways that we can work together. And that's part of the, the magic of what we're doing here with podcast guesting. Totally, totally. So I, I want a little sort of backtrack and, and get to know a little bit more about you, what you do, and how this whole partnership concept became a core part of the, the work that you do with clients. Absolutely. So my really quick backstory is actually professionally, I was an engineer. That's what I went to college for and got several degrees in and, and practiced for a long time as a consultant. Out of marriage ministry that I was doing on the side with my wife, we got drawn online and created our first website in 2009, a site called engagedmarriage.com that still exists today. And that really pulled me into digital marketing and selling online and, and how to do that well. That transitioned into doing a lot of marketing consulting for local and online businesses, which left my engineering career behind. And uh, one of those clients, and this will all make sense, I promise. One of those clients was a local butcher shop. And that butcher shop, the owner was a third generation guy, uh, really ambitious, and we really hit it off. And he said, hey, I have this brand, Fire Creek Snacks. I would love to sell it online. Do you know how to do that? I said, sure. Well, you know, so I created a Shopify store and, and basically created this e-commerce brand with him. So I'm a partner in that. And then marketing Fire Creek Snacks in the past several years, publicly through partnerships and partnership marketing techniques, basically created my whole coaching business. Like people saw me doing that. They asked a lot of questions. I got a lot of clients and I started running mastermind groups around that. And so that's where simple success coaching came from. So engineer to marriage, to meat sticks, to, uh, to marketing. And that, that's really how I got attuned to partnership marketing. And I've really worked with dozens and dozens of people now in that world and really refined it. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, fun. I, I just, I love talking about it. No. And, and I love the fact that you've actually sort of been through it, developing um, the process yourself, probably trying to, to, you know, figure it out. Trial and error is, is often how <laughs> a lot of us, particularly um, in the early days of the web back, back in the, the mid nineties is when I started marketing online and there wasn't a lot of, um, you know, experienced training for us to say, here's how you do all of it. And so, you know, we just had to sort of figure it out and, and find our way. And so having the ability to speak with your clients from experience, I, I think is is quite powerful, both in in sort of who's telling them and, and also so that you can really identify with them more, more effectively. It really is. I mean, I think that uh, it's a separator. You know, there's a lot of people who call themselves a business coach and they were trained by a coach to sell coaching to other coaches. And that's kind of a cliche, but there's a lot of truth to that. So yeah, the fact that I've had a digital business, engaged marriage, a physical product business, Fire Creek, and a coaching business and what I do there, it, it does give me a lot of credibility. And that along with all of the different clients I've been able to work with over the years, just give me a lot of different cross categorical experience, I guess, right? Like I've worked with dentists, but I've also worked with people who sell barbecue, <laughs> barbecue mm -hmm. grills online. And, and so it's just like a, a wide variety and breadth to draw from, which really helps uh, whenever people get stuck on certain aspects of in their own, they get in their own way because yeah. they overcomplicate things, but I'm able to draw from other verticals and, and previous experience pretty often. So today we're going to be talking about um, this concept of partnership as a, as a marketing, um, uh, approach and you know let let's assume that that a business sort of has most of usually no nobody has all of the fundamentals of marketing in place partnership is a very broad uh term and i i think of everything from you know uh it, two businesses finding a common um uh client or prospect out there that they can work to attract together to uh, a, a business that that signs up affiliates or certified partners to help bring them business. There's all different variations on the theme of partnership. Um, where where do you tend to, to work in that space? No, it's excellent examples and excellent point. So I'm really talking about mar strategic marketing partnerships. 
And the way I look at that and define that is first and foremost, it is getting your message or your product or service in front of your target market using someone else's platform, right? In, and really important, it's in a win-win-win scenario. Mm -hmm. Typically, no money is actually exchanging hands, although it can, to your point. There could be referral relationships, affiliate relationships. Um, so we can go through numerous examples. A really simple example is exactly what we're doing is podcast guesting, right? So in this scenario, I'm in front of your audience talking about what I love to talk about and my expertise. So in that scenario, the win, win, win for me, the win is I'm exposed to your audience and I'm exposed to you and I get a relationship with your previous guest. Like I have all these great things that could happen for me as a, as a point of getting on your show. So you, let's, let's, let's dive into this a little bit more and then we'll, then we'll talk about the, the benefit for me. Absolutely. So, so you're here, we're talking about stuff. You're showing off the, the knowledge you have. I'm going to, you know, send an email out to people about this episode. I'm going to post something on social media about, Hey, here's some cool thing that Dustin taught on, on this episode, go check it out. And so by extension, it's not necessarily just the, the people who are listening to me at this moment, but there's, there's a, you know, the, the water, the, the wider, um, uh, broadcasting of, Hey, Hey, go find this asset. And then you can take this piece of content that we've developed and repurpose it in other places as well. I've, I've like, I've noticed on your website, you, you know, have a, um, recently featured on and you show different podcasts that you've been on. So there's a credibility thing that you're, that you're benefiting from as well. hundred percent. Yeah. There, there's kind of multi-layered, but the, the obvious and most clear benefit to me is this one to many reach, right? Like I know David's audience has, you know, certain types of people in it. And if those are the types of people that might be interested in what I want to talk about, then I'm going to approach David and see if I can show value enough to him allow, allow me a spot on his show. That one to many is really important, but that's not, it, right. That's what most people consider. That's it. Well, what I found in doing this many, many times, I've been on about 50 podcasts, at least in counting, is there's also peer to peer relationships that, that come up. So David and I may develop a great relationship and maybe I refer work to him. He refers work to me. We do something together in collaboration. We at least learn from each other because, you know, we're, we're operating in a similar space. And then there's another level of and I kind of alluded to it a second ago where I've actually I've personally unlocked so much value. In my, is growing my network this way. And a really direct way is looking at your guest list. So mm -hmm. the people who have been on this show in the past, and the beautiful thing is it's evergreen because there's people that are going to appear in the future. And all I have to do is look at them very publicly. I can look at their LinkedIn. I can see what they talked about on the show. And if it's of interest, I could reach out to them. And I've got a really warm reason. Hey, we're both on David's show. There's an applied credibility, you know, some authority there because I made it on your show and, and I, it, I was good enough that it got published, hopefully. And, uh, you know, so it's so like, oh, this guy must know something. And, and so there's a reason to connect and talk, whether it be on LinkedIn, emailed, hopping on a Zoom call. So, yeah, it's really all that. It's, um, it's the brand exposure to the audience, the relationship with the host, and also the relationships that can come from the, the network of other people that have been on this show. I, I love that last point. Um, and by the way, uh, there's only one one recording we've ever done that hasn't been published, and uh, <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, I won't I won't mention his or her name. Um, the 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 last point that you made is really interesting because uh, you know people are often trying to make connection, whether it's the that annoying cold outreach that we get on on LinkedIn or an email or and 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 one of the ways that we're taught to you know to to open a conversation with somebody is to actually have done a little bit of research on them right and so you you are not shortcutting but you're finding an easy way to have done research simply by saying well i'm going to go through david's guest list find somebody i want to reach out to and i have the the perfect thing that i can already say to them without having to go to their website see what book they've recently published or where they get recently gave a ted talk and then comment on the fact that i watched the video and all of that Right. Yeah. And, and, and the really nice part about this is it's part of what we advocate a lot is, you know, like you need to do the parts you need to do in business, but a lot of stuff should be able to be done by an assistant. And so I'm here doing the interview and, and subject matter expert on partnership marketing, but it's even simpler than having to do any, any, like no one has to go do research, right? Like I can literally say, Hey, assistant, I was on this show. It just published, please go through with these criteria and find the people that I should be networking with. And she can go do that on my behalf. And then she can help me connect with them on LinkedIn and we do the initial connection. And it's all kind of formulaic, but also it's very warm because 
every every connection message may say, hey, I was on this show and I noticed you were on this show. I think it'd be great if we were connected because we clearly have common interest, but it's still a very warm relational anchor is what I call that, right? Like, and, and there are other scenarios where we or I will personally you know, do that research or I'll have her do that research on my behalf, but definitely always looking for a, a warm relational anchor, a warm reason to reach out, a point of commonality, something that shows I'm not like a, a weirdo from the internet that's just blasting you with cold messages like I'm sure you and I both get 15 times a day, but something that breaks through that noise. And this is just one really good way to shortcut that. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, and uh, I, I don't know that formulaic would be the word that I would use because my favorite word is systems and you've systematized it. So, there you uh, go. so yeah, I, I, th I think it's that's a really great approach, uh, particularly something that you can hand off to somebody else that they're going to be repeating that task on, on a regular basis. So you had you had said to me before we hit record, you know, podcasting is an example of it and it's something that's hot right now. But to understand a little bit more about partnerships and how, uh, you know, getting on somebody else's quote unquote stage yes. um, might might uh, happen. Run us through a few of the other scenarios that that uh, people might encounter. Yeah, I was thinking when you were going through and we were making the introduction, even engaged marriage back in 2009, because you're saying you've been around since the mid 90s online. I was in the mid 2000s, obviously before podcasting. But the way I grew that brand was very much through collaboration and partnerships. So I would do things back in the day, like guest blog post, um, put together an idea for a really cool ebook, and then collaborate with other people in the space to, to promote it, to create and like co create and promote it. So that's partnerships for Fire Creek. Um, one of our big levers for growth outside of podcasting is uh, subscription boxes. So finding like a niche subscription boxes where, cause I should, I should explain fire Creek snacks is like a craft meat snack, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a protein stick. And so if there's a ketogenic diet box that needs new, wants product to be sampled every month, like the win for us is exposure to that brand. The win for the brand owner is some fresh new snack to include at, usually at a discount. And then the end user gets a, their, hopefully their new favorite snack. So subscription boxes is a great partnership. Um, if you think of, there's a lot, obviously examples, but like local businesses. Um, so like, I know some of your audience is more like a local service business. So like the really generic, but still effective form in that, uh, in that way would be like lunch and learns, mm -hmm. right? Like you have a captive audience, they're there to learn from you as an authority and you have the ability to build a relationship with them. And, uh, but you can take that even to the next level. Like I, I got hired, I got to do some consulting recently for the, the largest paint franchisor in, in the US. And I got to work with their top five franchise owners in different markets. We were just coming up with, we kind of came up with immediate, medium and long-term partnerships that they could try locally. And the short-term one is kind of a play on that lunch and learn, but doing it more creatively. So what we came up with there was like, let's, let's create a VIP happy hour, maybe a whiskey tasting, a wine tasting, but like 20 people in a really cool place in town, you as that franchise owner are going to pay for that, but you're going to hand select the most influential realtors, commercial brokers, you know, like the people who really are going to drive painting business, invite them. It's an invite only event. And then while you're there, give them some kind of special bonus that only their clients can get access to. And, and we came up with that completely through that win, win, win frame framework. Like the win for me is obvious as the paint franchise where I'm going to get some big clients and some big referral partners and the win for the client, the end client, the, the homeowner who's buying this home, that's evident because they get a special bonus from working with the realtor. The win for the realtor is not only some yummy wine and bourbon or whatever, but uh, status, right? Like they're one of only 20 people in their community who were invited to this and have this access to this bonus they can give out. So that's kind of a lunch and learn, you know, to, to the max. Yeah, um, that's I, the kind of stuff that I really love to get creative with different businesses on. I, I love that. And you, you remind me of something I, I've forgotten. I, I did years ago back in, in 2010, I started a uh, Facebook advertising agency and we focused, um, you know, in a, in a local market and I had banks host lunch and learns at yep. the banks it would be the commercial banker and they would have me be the bait right i came in and i would teach at that point this was a hot topic facebook advertising for local business yep. and this must have been 2011 or 2012 and they would then get 
you know, the the five or 10 minutes in front of these people who came in about, you know, growing their business using Facebook ads uh, to talk about commercial banking opportunities. And they would foot the foot the bill. And, you know, we both would benefit from getting in front of prospective clients. And so yeah. I, I see I see the win, win, win all of, around. I kind of chuckle because when I was leaving my engineering career, I was like, I, I need a few more clients to make this, you know, comfortable. Because My wife was a stay at home mom at the time and I was jumping off the cliff. And my, one of my best friends was a commercial banker specializing in healthcare, specifically dentists in our, in our local area. And we did the same thing. We actually did it more informally. It was kind of a happy hour, kind of at a, at a St. Louis Cardinals game. But the idea was, Hey, Dustin's a marketing expert. He's going to be there to talk about how to drive more leads to your dental practice. He's going to donate his time because we're friends. And of course, what I got out of that was numerous clients because they are, they were very interested in how to do it. But none of them wanted to run Facebook ads. Right. So it's like, here's how you do it and why you should do it. And then, you know, go ahead and use that. And then they're all coming to me. Actually, I'd, how much is it to pay you to do this? And then, yeah, so just, same scenario, but instead of, uh, instead of your end user, in this case, it was, uh, it was dentist, but yeah. I still have dental coaching clients from that. <laughs> that was like many years ago um, that I, I no longer run Facebook ads, but just people who wanted to kind of stay in contact and, and think strategically about their marketing. So. Yeah, I, I love that. And I love the uh, the how about I just pay you to do it because I, I've had that happen in so many scenarios where I will teach and go really in depth and they go, oh, wow, this is so cool. Great information. I'm not going to do it. Can can you do it right. for me? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, yeah, we gave a 2009 example, a uh, meat stick example, a local example, and then the podcast guesting is kind of a universal strategy right now for any online business, especially for people who have like, something to teach or a story to tell or a mission they want to share. I mean, that's, it's really a great, a great platform uh, as a partnership marketing channel. So as you're working with a client and, and it, we should talk a little bit about the types of, of clients that you tend to, to focus on working with, you have an approach where you have sort of a, a 90 day plan mm -hmm. uh, that, that you work on specifically around partnership marketing. Can you, can you walk us through a little bit of that and, and talk about the types of clients who, who you work with in Absolutely. this approach? Yeah, I mean, the main people I work with, the, the, I should say it this way, the main people I market to on purpose are like B2B service providers. So that might be a marketing agency, it might be a, a coach, a consultant, you know, people who provide kind of higher end services on, on, on a regular basis to their clients. I also end up working a lot with e-commerce brand owners because of my Fire Creek Snacks brand is so prominent. Um, and, and the only distinction between those two really is the B2B service providers are really trying to sell what I would call like a high ticket sale, whether that's $2,000 a month Facebook ad services or $30,000 coaching engagement, but they're thinking of that. The e-commerce people don't really have that big immediate payday, but what they're looking for is what I call high ticket relationships. So it mm -hmm. might be like a major influencer, a brand they want to collaborate uh, with, a distributor. So that said, the end result is kind of the same, but slightly different, but the process is exactly the same. Um, and, and for your audience, make it easy to remember. I talk about five P's. That's the framework I run people through. So the first is purpose. I'll say them real quick and we'll go back. Mm -hmm. Purpose, plan, pitch, perform, profit. And uh, purpose is basically getting real clear on why do I want to be on. Uh, we're going to also use podcasts as our example. Obviously, there's plenty of partnerships. But why yeah. do I want to be on a podcast? What's going to be my call to action at the end? Like, what's the purpose? Once you've got that defined, the plan is finding the right, finding that target market and opportunities for that call to action on different shows and then finding those shows and prioritizing them. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Three is pitch. And that's doing what we talked about earlier, like having a really warm, cold, or I mean, what, what would otherwise be a cold email, like, but a warm version of that with good relational anchors, a very compelling reason for someone to open, read, and take action on what you're saying. That's the pitch. Get them to say, yes, have me on my, come on my show. And then four is perform. So perform is prepping for the show, doing well on the show, making sure you know what you're wanting to teach on the show, having a, a rapport with the host, doing smart things is like a follow-up to the host, like staying in touch, rating them on iTunes, like just things that make you stand out and make you a good guest because that immediately turns into referrals. So that's kind of the core four things. And then number five is profit. And so profit is the other half, right? So it's one mm -hmm. of the five P's, but it's half of what we do. And so in that 90 days, it's 12 weeks. So the first six weeks are really that first four pieces. Like how do I find the right shows, pitch them, get, get yeses. And then the second half of what we do with clients is, okay, 
I'm getting good at that. I've got a flow. I've got a virtual assistant who's now been trained on how to do all that for me. So all I have to do is show up on the show, but I need that back end. I need a lead pipeline. I need a way to leverage every one of those appearances into serving my business outcomes, which is typically, again, a high ticket sale or a high ticket relationship. And so we lead people through that back end too. So it's kind of a front end and a back end. And then what we layer over the top is our kind of prime service is we run the brand owner through that. So they really understand it and have ownership of especially like the purpose. They're going to be the one performing mm -hmm. and they're going to obviously be the one profiting, but we want a virtual assistant or someone else on their team to be able to run the whole thing so that 90% of the hand to hand work is done by someone else. And so part of what we offer is we will help them hire a VA if they don't have one. And then we train that VA during that 90 days together. So if you're a brand owner, like you literally walk away at the end of 90 days with a, a partnership marketing system running and all you have to do is show up and talk about yourself and your business and why you're passionate and then take sales calls if that's what you do uh, on the back end in your business. Yeah, I, lo I love that. And it's it's so well thought out in terms of all of the necessary pieces to be able to uh, to to identify get get the right conversations happening with the right people and then the the, the point that you've made about the profit obviously is is a key to it because right. uh all of that effort without having some place for people to go and find you and follow up uh is well it you you rely on people this this is what happens by the way with most businesses before they actually think about their marketing they assume that if people are interested they'll go to the the <laughs> you know the extra effort of figuring it out themselves and so it's the reason why you know before the end of this conversation Dustin you are going to tell people where they can find you right and what what you have to offer them and and all of that and so making sure that you've built that into uh the the, the process for your clients, I think is, is key as well. Yeah. And I, what we find is you know, po again, podcast guesting specifically, people will come to us and they'll say, I've never been on a podcast. I don't know where to start or more than likely they'll say, I've been on two. Um, it was fine. I got like a little bit of a result, but they're not doing it systematically. And so that's, that's, that's big mistake. Number one is they just kind of do it one off if someone offers it to them, but I like to be on one podcast a week. Like that's a rhythm I like to get in. And I found that it builds so much momentum that it's not about every individual show at that point. It's about doing it systematically and consistently that really generates the juice, right? The other side, the other big um, constraint I hear from people is I've been on a hundred shows. I've never got a single lead or single sale um, because you can get on a lot of shows. And if you're not picking the right shows, you don't have the right message. You're not making a clear call to action. And you don't do some of the other more leveraged strategies that we started to talk a little bit about earlier, like following up with the guest, building a relationship with the host. Um, you know, there's lots of lots of things that can happen once you get on the show. But a lot of people are blind to the back end. So that's again, it's, they mess up the front end or they mess up the back end. There aren't many people who inherently know how to put them both together. And so that's why we call it an accelerator. But that's why we do these 90 day groups, these little small groups um, to lead people through that process. And just as importantly, to put them in a network of people who think like that and who are looking for partnerships and who have a lot of referral opportunities to each other. So that's, yeah, that's, that's what I've loved to do is lead those kind of groups through yeah. this systematic approach to things. Well, that's cool. I, I hadn't realized when I was reading it on your website that you do it as a cohort. And so I think there's a, additional value obviously in uh, seeing what others are doing and, and supporting and being supported by others. And that's, that's, yeah. that's really smart. Yeah. And what you see on my site, it's, it's purposeful, right? So my call to action is just going to be like, go to my site. And then we, I do free strategy calls with people. And the reason I do that is because it's very much a two-way street with these cohorts, as you can imagine, they're only 12 people each. And so if I, one bad apple spoils the bunch, right? So I, I'm, I don't always talk about the fact that even <laughs> accelerator even exists. It's only for the right types of people because there's plenty of other people who are like not ready for that, but maybe they, um, need to refer to someone else to do work with, or I do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one, or I'll do some consulting for the right types of businesses. So my main thing is like having great conversations because I find that, you know, maybe a third of the people are actually ready to hear about an accelerator type of group. A third, um, I probably just need straight up referred to people in my network. And then, you know, a third maybe aren't ready yet, but I can give them the tools and some free resources so they can get ready. And then maybe the next cohort, you know, they're ready for it. So that, yeah, there's a reason it's not, it's like, a I don't even have a sales page for it. It's all through conversation mm -hmm. and then the right people, because every group's also a little different. So 
um, yeah, I kind of curate the groups, I guess, is a way to say that. Yeah. So I, I want to shift gears for a moment here because your um, your website, as I'm looking at it, it talks a little bit about some of your um, your background. It talks about uh, some of the uh, work that you do. It also you you highlight um, certifications that you've gotten in some of the trainings that you've done. Looks like with Digital Marketer, yeah. one of those is really obvious to me. It's e-commerce marketing, right? The other one, however, uh, is something that I understand, but I want you to explain a little bit more because I think it, to, to a certain extent, applies to not obviously what we've been talking about, and that's yeah. the customer value optimization yeah. uh, stuff that you do. Yeah, that's really the foundation of when I when I, I talked about I ran engaged marriage, and at first it was like I wrote a book and expected everyone's going to come like read the book, and you know how that how that goes. And we had some early success through those collaborations, but there was no system, there was nothing behind, there was no back end. And so what customer value optimization really means is serving a customer really well on a journey and, and, you know, having, giving them value. And of course, receiving value as a business owner along that journey. So that, you know, the kind of the classic funnel would be um, the discovery and then a lead magnet. So they're on your list and then you have a front end product and you have your core product and you send them into either like a higher end service or an ongoing continuity program. And so that's what digital marketer calls CVO or customer value optimization, but it's not. So from a business owner, it's, value as far as like it increases your revenue, but the real intent of it is how can you best serve every customer based on where they're at in that journey? Because people find you in different ways. They enter in different stages of readiness, if you will, but it's incumbent on you as the brand owner and the marketer to lead them to the next step too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have a front end business, they sell a book and then that's it. But like, if you don't have something beyond that, you don't really have a business. And by the way, if you only sell a book and nothing else, uh, reach out to Dustin or me and we'll help you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, it's 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 fascinating the the range of folks that um, that you've worked with through this process. Um, you, you've worked with people who are in the coaching consulting space. You've worked with I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the Hubbard peanut company. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Hubbard. but but very different types of uh, organizations uh, from different perspectives. How uh, how have you found in and and again you started working in the marriage you know space then in the retail space. Where have you found opportunities to take concepts or ideas from one area, one type of business, and apply them to others that may not be all that obvious, except yeah, the fact that Maybe. you you you've been exposed to them every single, literally every day. I mean that's. That's so what I've found uh, in evolving through this process and having numerous businesses, a lot, dozens of clients, people in all industries. The thing that lights me up the most is like being the head of these small groups because the groups themselves are fairly diverse. I mentioned there's e-com people. Usually there's some coaches or some agency owners. That's, that's great. But in a hot seat setting, like examples come out of the back of my head like oh wait in 2012 we had this dental client and he we came up with this bundle and it, like it was this crazy front end offer and it was like really successful or hey we helped this person they were preparing for this event and at the event they sold this kind of program and then this led to this back end so yeah the cross pollination of verticals online offline um, and even different time periods I, i'm sure that's a gift of yours too david like Stuff that direct mail might be an example, like stuff you might have thought about first in 2000, in 1996 to drive website traffic actually works really well in 2022, but no one talks about it, right? Yeah. So the, all they want to talk about is TikTok or something, but these fundamental marketing strategies are pretty timeless. Um, and it's like, I've used direct mail to drive restaurant and that butcher shop. He, he got a lot of success off direct mail, like local businesses. Um, I haven't done it much for online, but I'm, I'm intrigued to actually try that. So um, but anyway, I don't know if I answered your question, but the point is, yes, it's like all the above. I, I really love working different verticals and different, you know, horizontal uh, uh, industries, too. No, absolutely. And, and it, you know, you, you bring up direct mail. It's funny because this is the third time today that direct mail has has been brought up as, uh, you know, nobody does direct mail anymore and they really should. And and frankly, you know, we're we're recording this in the summer of 2022. I don't see direct mail uh, being 
a platform or medium that is going to have hordes and hordes of businesses running toward it, except during election time and the holiday season in December. And that's a great opportunity for businesses. So uh, since you brought it up, I'll just uh, emphasize it's actually a terrific channel um, and and one that uh, you'll stand out in a lot more uh, very often than than uh, (laughs) you might think. Yeah. And I mean, as you were talking, so we, I haven't done a lot of direct mail for my own businesses, but like one thing we have done that's been really successful that I kind of borrowed from uh, another example for our Fire Creek snacks. So when we send those out, we fulfill our own, our own um, direct to consumer business. We have our own warehouse. So we send those out though to our direct consumer customers. There's inserts in there, right? And they're like really nice postcards and you can't really ignore them as you're unboxing and taking the snack sticks out. And we'll run different offers on there. A lot of times it'll be highlighting our subscribe and save. Hey, if you like these, you can get 10% off your next order. Make sure this is like, it shows them graphically like the steps to take to do it. Um, We could, you know, do partner um, promotions there and actually get paid for inserting these into our own packaging. There's a lot of creative things you can do if you're already going to be sending the package, like make different offers in the package. Um, And that largely came actually from the dental experience because dentists, at least in our area, do a lot of direct mail. Mm -hmm. Um, So they'll send out, Hey, you know, free teeth whitening, like these kind of offers. Right. And I was in that world a lot. And I'm like, we should definitely be doing this with our physical product business, Fire Creek. And it's been super successful and it costs like three cents. Like you're already shipping the thing. You just have to put a postcard in there. Yeah. It's it's definitely something to to That's brilliant. And, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a classic old school move that you've, uh, you've brought back. Hey, Dustin, this has been a great conversation. I think it's now probably a good time to tell people where they can find you. I have no call to action. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, so simplesuccesscoaching.com. It's a very uh, simple site, <laughs> as the name might imply. And, and the few things you'll see there, a couple is links to my other stuff. So if you're like, hey, I want to check out Fire Creek Snacks or this engaged marriage thing sounds intriguing, you, know, you can find that there easily enough. And then the, the big call to action on the site is one to join our newsletter. I write a weekly newsletter that's all case studies. So if you like real life examples from my businesses and client businesses with their permission, that's what that's what comes out every Friday from us. And then as I re- alluded to earlier, you can book a free strategy call with me. It's no, there's, There is no sale on the call. It's literally me asking you questions and learning about your business and where you feel stuck and giving you clarity, giving you a 90 day plan. If that 90 day plan makes sense to be in one of our accelerators or a referral to a, you know, a partner who could help you better. Like that's what I, I'm here to serve first and foremost. And with that, I fill up all my accelerators and it's a, it's a win, win, win. And that's in that sense, that's really how I like to live. That's awesome. Well, uh, Dustin Reekman, thank you so, so very much. This is, this has been great uh, an introduction to how to incorporate partnerships into your business uh, to create win-win-win uh, for, for everyone involved. And uh, we'll make sure to leave a link to your site and uh, hope to encourage folks to head on over there, sign up for your newsletter, and uh, perhaps book a strategy session with you as well. Absolutely. David, you asked uh, great questions, brought up some really uh, kind of fresh ammo for me and and thinking through some different examples for people. So I appreciate that. And uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you and look forward to hearing from your audience. Ah, shucks. Thank you so much, folks. (laughs) This has been another episode of More Perfect Marketing. Thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you, your time. And listen, if you know somebody who could benefit from hearing this conversation, please share it with them. And if you have some positive feedback, always love to hear that over at Apple Podcasts. Until next time, I'm David Baer, and this is More Perfect Marketing. Take care.